Anybody in this church believe in miracles? Yeah. Look over to your neighbor and tell them you're in the right place. Amen. You are in the right place. Today we talk about the gifts of power. We've been in a series for some time about the gifts of God, and there are so many of them. Today we talk about the gifts of power. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to start at verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Everybody say, that's me. That's me. Every man. To what? Profit. To profit. That's to gain. That's to go forward. That's to be blessed. The manifestation, the revealing, the outpouring, the blessing of the Spirit is given to every person, to every man, to profit with all. Now listen, for to one, that begins to start listing off these gifts of the Spirit right here. For to one is given by the Spirit, word of wisdom. To another, word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Now in these gifts that we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about the gift of faith, the gifts of healing, that's plural, gifts, and working of miracles. How many of y'all believe in miracles? Yeah. You're in the right church. Amen. We believe those things. How many of y'all believe in healing? See, right? How many of y'all have, how many, how many all have seen a healing? How many been healed, right? See, good stuff, right? How many of y'all believe in miracles? Seen them, right? Yeah. And, and, and so what I want to do is I want to encourage us. How many of y'all believe that there's more to God than what we're walking in today? Amen. Yeah. He's really big. Amen. Big. Big. I, I, I do not have, the Apostle Paul did not have vocabulary. He talked about the exceeding greatness. In, in, when, when he wrote to the church in Ephesus, he, he said, it, his, it's, it's beyond measure how big God is. I agree. So here's what I want to give a, a disclaimer right off the bat. I'm going to talk about things today that I don't understand because he's bigger than I understand. Amen? If you've got it all figured out, you can have the mic. Right. Okay. So when we talk about miracles, let's, let's define miracles to begin with. A scriptural definition of miracles. Miracles are not what sometimes people call the miracle, oh, it's such a beautiful day, the sun come up in the east. How many of y'all know that's the natural order of things? The sun's supposed to come up in the east, it goes across the sky and sets in the west. A miracle is the absolute reversal of the natural order of things. A biblical, a biblical miracle is the reversal of the natural order of things. So if the sun come up in the west and sat in the east, that would be a miracle. There are some things that God has set in natural order. It's the way it's supposed to be. He has set those, and that's the way it is. In the story of Lazarus, and we'll, we're going to just reference this as we go throughout the, the, the service, uh, we're going to look at these, these first five gifts that are listed right here in, in verse 9 here in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians. In the story of Lazarus, I want to just bring this out at this point, that you will see... These three power gifts already in operation just in this. And Jesus walked in there. How many know Jesus was our example? He was the model. And, and so when we're talking about faith, Romans 12, 3 talks about he's given to everyone the measure of faith. Everybody say, I have faith, right? You've been given the measure of faith. But when we're talking about the gift of faith, it's just like a supernatural Holy Ghost download that takes your faith beyond that measure to something that is absolutely extraordinary. It, it, it's just, and I don't know exactly how to explain it, but I can see it in manifestation. When you walk up to the tomb of a guy that's been dead for four days and stinking already, it takes some serious faith to talk to the guy that's not there or you're nuts. It's going to be one of the two, right? Bless his heart, right? He walks up to this tomb, and, and the reason I want you to look at verse 9 right here, all three of these power gifts, these are gifts of power. They're... they're, they're, they're it's not that they're beyond anything from God's good. How many of y'all say amen, right? It, it's good, it's special, and we want that. But there are some that are extraordinary when you're in a tough spot, when you're in a hard climb. In this right here, the gift of faith, the gifts, plural, of healing, 
Let me qualify that word gifts. Everybody uh, see that plural? Gifts. Because you are spirit, soul, and body. Most of the time when we talk about healing, immediately we go to the physical man. But how many of y'all know you have a soul as well? Anybody ever been broken in your spirit, in your soul, in your body? All three of those areas we can need healing in. Amen. And so gifts, plural. And he, he works all the way across the board. So miracles are reversal. It, 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 it reversed the course of nature when Jesus walks up to that tomb and he says, Lazarus, come forth. And a guy that's been dead four days. Huh? Rigor mortis turned direction. A heart that had quit beating for four days started beating again. Oxygen supplied to a brain that hadn't had oxygen. How many of y'all know God doing something big? And we put him in a little box. We become comfortable with the God we're serving today. We become satisfied and we become stationary. Huh? But our God's bigger than that, gang. And so today's message is not a message of condemnation. It's a message to encourage. Listen. There are times when I've seen things that I've prayed for and it didn't come out the way I prayed. Anybody say amen? Let's be real. And, and I get it. But that still does not exclude God from being a healer and a miracle worker. And we need to have faith and we need to press ourselves. We need to catch another gear. So when we look at this, to another, so we've gone through, right? Word of wisdom, word of knowledge by the same spirit. To another, faith. Everybody say faith. faith. This is not the ordinary faith. This is just a super, uh, this is faith on steroids, man. I mean, woo, right? Big. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. And to another, working of miracles. Those three are the category of the gifts of power. Woo. Revival. Do we believe in miracles? Yes. There's a lot of, throughout the, the, the years, this is not a, not a word of condemnation. This is a word of encouragement. Through the years as a, as a pastor, I, I've, I've talked and, and, and shared with a lot of different people in this well, you know, Dio, we just don't really uh, agree with that. We think that, and this is their theology and, 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 and genuinely their belief, uh, and I'm not trying to negate that or anything in, in any way, shape, or form. Those things were done away with, uh, with the, the apostles and things like that. And so um, I don't believe that. I believe that he's still the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? That's what Hebrews 13 says concerning Jesus. And these things that we're going to read about here just in a little bit, he set them in the church. Everybody say, he set them. We'll, we'll get there just in a moment. If he set those things, and how many of y'all know when God opens the door, it can't be closed? If God closes the door, it can't be opened. When he sets something, it's not going to be moved until he's ready to move it. A lot of people don't believe in miracles until they need one. That's the truth. A lot of people want to see a miracle, but they don't, need, they don't want to need one. Right? Healing, same thing. Don't believe in it till they need a healing. Here's a whole list of people that on our prayer list that need a touch in one way, shape, or another. And there, there, there's more, right? You just saw the, the clip from, from, from Turkey there and, 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 and Syria, over 40,000 dead. Can you imagine the compounded grief? Breaks, breaks a heart. You say, well, it's a Muslim nation. What an opportunity. What a stage for the love of God to be poured out. Mm, God help us. God help us. Now then, so in this gifts, these power gifts, let's go on down um, to uh, verse 31. Talks to us about covet earnestly the best gifts. So I'm going to back up just a little bit and we'll read from verse 27. Verse 27, still yet in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians. And we're going to verse 31 where he says, covet earnestly. That's the Greek word zelos, which is where we would get to burn with zeal. Covet earnestly, to burn, to be on fire for God. Does that sound like revival to you? It does to me. To be on fire for the things of God. Covet earnestly the best gifts. And so let's read this, and then I'm going to tell you a story that I think will make some sense to you. Look over at your neighbor and tell him, you look like you need to catch another gear today. <laughs> Anybody ever heard that? You look like you need to catch another gear today. All right. 
All right, we'll get there. Verse 27, chapter 12, 1 Corinthians. Now you are, everybody say, I am, I am. the body of Christ and members in particular. You aren't the whole thing, but you're part of the whole thing. Right? You're gifted in this area, in this area, in this area, and they're gifted in this area, in this area. And, and when we all come together, how many of y'all know we can cover the whole thing? I'm not the whole eye, or I'm not the whole hand, or I'm not the foot, right? But when we come together as a body, he gives us this visual picture. Look over to your name and tell them we're better together. That's why hell works every day against the unity of the church. He desires to separate, to confuse, to confound, to destroy, to get us at odds with one another, but we're not going to let him. The prize is too big. Huh? And God, increase our faith. God, I want to be able to pray as big as you are, and I don't even know how big that is. Anybody say amen? amen. Mm. I don't want to just pray as big as you are. I want to believe as big as you are. Amen? I, I, I want to be able to yield. There's a lot of people that believe, but they have never yielded. Now, oh, I believe that Jesus died. Yeah. Have you accepted him? Have you yielded to him? No, I haven't done that. Boy, today would be a really good day if you're not walking where you need to. Just because you believe. Listen, the devil believes he didn't yield. Amen? Mm. And then the last thing, walking in these power gifts, is we have to mature. Those three words are really important to us. You've got to believe, but believing in and of itself is not enough. You have to yield. You have to receive. And then you walk in that as you mature and as you grow in the things of God. Anybody say amen? amen? That's the way it works. Okay. Now then, verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ, the members in particular, and God has set. Everybody say, he said it. It ain't going to be moved until he moves it. He said it in the church. As long as the church is occupying this church age, this church time, these things, I believe, are set. This is the way it is. I don't believe it was done away with. What it does sometimes is it really stretches us and makes us uncomfortable to believe for something that's hard to believe for. For when I read the scripture with men, it's impossible, but with God, all things are possible. I look at it and say, God, there ain't no way. That's just too big of a hill. There, there's no, I, don't have, I don't have enough power to climb the hill. Anybody been there? The grade is too steep and it's too long. But what's impossible with man is possible with God. Nothing impossible to those who believe. Believe, then we yield, and as we yield to God... See, as I yield to God, as I yield to the power of God, as I yield to the love of God working into me, as I yield my mind to the thinking of God, and I begin to yield my plans and my agenda, boy, I struggle with that. Anybody else? Yeah. Right? It's real. So we need to hear this, and we need to be reminded that as we yield, the opportunity... See, if we've got so much going on in here... How do we make more room for the power of God to flow? Right? But when I begin to yield and I begin to clear out some of the stuff that's in the way. God, your love, what you, what you operate, you are love. You so love the world that you gave. And as I yield to your heart, as I yield to what, what you're passionate about then that begins to create a fire inside me. Amen? Amen? But there are a lot of things... Now listen, there's a lot of things in this world that catch our eye, isn't there? Amen. Those are the things that are a little bit dangerous. You've got to watch for the things that catch your heart. There's a difference. Amen? Now... Look at this right here. He goes on and he, let me read it. He said, and God set some in the church. First apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, he set miracles. I mean, I believe in miracles. He said it. He said, listen, if he didn't set it that way, he said, now listen, this is the way it's going to be until the last of the original 12 die off. And then when they die off, then you guys have got the example. You'll never need another miracle. So it's not set after that. It's just, it's not going to. It's kind of up for grabs. 
So listen, there, there are times when we don't see things work out the way that we've wanted it to work out. There are times when we've prayed and things didn't work out the way we, we've prayed. But there have been other times when we got more than we asked for. Yes. Anybody say amen? amen. Mm. Those times when I've seen things not work out and, and, and believe for everything, work, battle, pray, fast, seek, knock, right? All those things. And, and, and then your heart carries a scar, right? Hurt. Didn't happen that way. And so this is what I learned a long, long, long time ago. I'll never doubt the things I do know because of the things I don't. You've heard me say it if you've been here any length of time, right? I will never doubt. I don't understand all the things that there is, but I know this. I can grow. I can mature. I can keep but I can't do that and stay stationary right here. I can't do that contented right here. I can't do that if all of the distractions. How many of y'all think we live in a time when we need more God in our world? You know how we get more God in our world? More God in you, more God in me. Huh? That's how we get more God in this world. You know how revival works? Revival works at one person at a time. It's not some, listen, and you can't make it, you can't manufacture it, you can't trump it up, you can't hype it up. When God starts, pour, it's because people are hungry. And that's why we're hearing about Asbury, all right, college and the other college. That's why, hey, I, I've been, uh, Pensacola, anybody remember that one? Brownsville, anybody remember that one? I wasn't around in Azusa Street, but I've read the history. Good stuff. How about here? How about now? Huh? How about here and how about now? We believe those things and then, then now listen, it don't fall on our head like ripe cherries. We've got to press in. You've got to make room. You, and there's no other way. We have to yield. I know you believe it, but are we yielded to it? And have we grown enough to be able to walk in it? Now, he set these miracles. He set gifts of healings. Look at that, both of them plural there. Gifts of healings. They're different. There's a variety of gifts for a variety of areas that need healed. Gifts of healings. Amen. How many of y'all know there's a lot of brokenness in this world? Amen. Spirit, soul, or body, right? God help us. Hmm? I've seen addicts healed. Uh, right? I've seen cancer healed. I've seen one of the first things we share in this with early service. One of the first things, early on in our walk with God, we went to a conference. I don't even remember where it was at. And, and I, I think it was Happy Goodman and his wife. I can't remember. Don't quote me on that. And there's a huge auditorium. And, and I, I don't know, probably a couple thousand people, something like that. There was a bunch, a, a lot. And, and out of that, it was one of the most unique. How many of y'all know God's just got some things that... See, listen, the gifts of God, they change the person that's working in those gifts. They change the person that's touched by those gifts. And they change the people who see those gifts in operation. All three areas create change. We're young in this thing and just getting started. We're growing in faith. And out of that audience... They called several people, not just us, but several people said, come up and we want you to verify this. Now listen, I'm a skeptic. Anybody here, right? You ain't going to trick me. I don't want to see some preacher magic trick. Right? Right? The illusion. I'm easy to fool, man. I just sit there and I, right? Uh, that, anybody ever seen the magician guys doing the foolish thing, right? Seen that right there? I fooled every time. Every time. There's not one time I've never figured out one trick. Got me. Fool me. I'd be giving away trophies all the time. Right? Fool me. This guy had a leg, and I, I, I would guess probably six inches shorter than the other. I set him down on stage. Listen, we're not trying to make a sideshow. We just want to encourage you to believe and to trust and try to grow in this thing that God is who He says He is and He's still a healer and He's still a miracle worker and you're going to see the course of nature change right here and God gets all the glory. See, He wasn't trying to get glory to a minister. wasn't trying to get glory to a ministry because we can do all this. Send us your money. <laughs> wasn't none of that going on. We've seen it though, haven't we? Anybody been tricked by the magic preacher? Listen. 
Don't be fooled and don't be taken in, but don't dismiss the real thing because, listen, the enemy, the enemy wouldn't try to counterfeit it if there wasn't a real. Amen? Amen. I believe that with everything that's in me. And got up there. He said, we want you to come up here. And you look at this. You have the legs shorter and all that right there. And how they knew all of that. But it's just like Jesus with that whole Lazarus thing. They come to him and said, your, your friend Lazarus is about to die. And he says these words right here. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge. This sickness is none to death. This is for the glory of God. That's word of wisdom and word of knowledge right there. And then he goes to the tomb and he says, Lazarus. Right? I've heard a bunch of old fired up Pentecostal preachers back in the day, man. About that time, they'd, they'd catch another gear right there. And they said, the reason he called his name, because if he hadn't said Lazarus, and he had just said, come forth, every grave in the world would have broke open. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> it don't say that anywhere, but that's good preaching anyway. It's just fun. That's just fun. It didn't cost you anything. It might have happened that way. I don't know. But I do know he said Lazarus. <laughs> come forth. Right? Mm. He's a big God. Could have happened. Could have went down that way. Not time for the resurrection. How many of y'all believe one day all of them will bust open, huh? Yeah, baby, that's right. It's coming. It's coming. Now, you see, God set these things in the church, and, and, and these evangelists that was there that was leading this service, and, and, and they said, we want you to watch this. And Marsha and I watched that leg. And it changed us forever. We wasn't involved. Wasn't our prayer. Wasn't our faith. But the power of God. It changes the person that's walking in it. It changes the person that's touched by it. And it changes the person forever that sees it and witnesses it. I've seen too many to not believe today. Too many to not believe. So there are times when I need to catch another gear. And try to get on up to these best things that God has for us. He set these in the church, miracles, then gifts of healings, plural, helps. Thank God for the help in ministry. Thank you all that just helped. Governments, diversities, tongues, oh, not that one. Now he asked a question, are all apostles? And the answer is no, 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 they're not. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. But how many of y'all think it ought to be resident in the body when we come together? Huh? There's some of you got more gifting in you than you know. I believe that. You got more gifting in you than you know, but you got to yield to it. If you'll yield to it, you'll see such a revival in your own heart and in your own life. There'll be things come out of you that you say, I can't believe. I just laid hands. Woo! I cannot believe. Right? That lame man on the right? Peter and John walking in, Acts chapter 3. We don't have silver and gold, but what we've got, we give you some of it in the name of Jesus. And he went to praising God, and I guarantee you it wasn't one of those, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> it was one of them, whoa, right? Getting it on. Having a Holy Ghost Jericho march. Some of you say, what's that? <laughs> You've been raised up in Old Pentecost, you'd know what that was, right? That's when they're getting ready to cross the Red Sea, and they just watch God do a miracle, and it split. How many of y'all know that's a miracle? Huh? The same God. Huh? Jordan, back up. Huh? Whoop. I know you're flooding right now, old Jordan, but stop. Listen, the one that created nature can back up nature and change the course when he wants to. When it serves his will and when it serves his purpose. And I want, huh? How many of y'all know we need to cross on over? Huh? Not stay over there in that other old land of Egypt, griping and complaining, well, I wish God would move. He never quit moving. He's never quit moving. He'd been moving, right? And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That's about Genesis chapter 1. Right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was out formed void, right? And the Spirit of God moved. He's still moving, gang. Still moving. We're the ones that's changed. We're the ones that's gotten stationary. We're the ones that have gotten comfortable. We're the ones that have gotten stagnant. Again, listen to me. Not a condemnation. It's an encouragement. Let's move up. Let's catch another gear. All right. Have all healing, gifts of healing. Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? The answer is no. Then he says, but covet earnestly. Be on fire with zeal. That's the way it would read. Be on fire. I come to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. 
Woo! A little bit of fire, huh? Won't be no fire in the pew till there's a little bit in the pulpit, huh? Amen. That's right. Light her up, Jesus. I ain't afraid to preach. Come on. <laughs> Covet earnestly the best gifts. Now, let me, let me qualify that word best for you. It's, according to Thayer's definition, more useful, more serviceable, and more advantageous. As Strong's would put it, it is just simply stronger than the others. Stronger. How many of y'all know sometimes we need something that's a little stronger? Covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet I show unto you a more excellent way. And then he begins to talk about love in chapter 13, right? Covet earnestly. In 1983, Marsha and I, Mandy, Jeffrey, Jeffrey was in mama's womb. In 1983, we made our first trip to the Rocky Mountains. Now, we talk about the mountains of Missouri, and in 1980, the winter of 79 and 80, we had a huge snowstorm, tiny, wherever tiny's at. There we go. And I made a vow that I would never live another winter in Missouri without a four-wheel drive truck. That's bad, wasn't it? It was bad. We lived with tiny for about a week before we could get out. It shut everything down. We went, and it's 1980, and me and Mama here, we bought us a 1977 short bed, short cab, not extended, not club cab, get the picture, Ford four-wheel drive with a 360 two-barrel, not four-barrel. Some of you have no idea what that is. Honey, what does he mean, two-barrel? Tell him after church. Everybody say, more power. <laughs> But we thought we had something because all we'd ever driven around was here until 1983, and we went west. From Fort Collins, we went up, and we're headed up the Poudre Canyon, and we're going up toward Cameron Pass. Anybody know Cameron Pass? We're about to go up over that. We're coming up along by the Poudre River. I had climbed Twin Bridge Hill more than once in that old truck, and it wasn't powerful, but it'd get you onto the top, and usually in third gear. I was raised in a logger's home, and whenever Dad would pull up a load of logs coming up Twin Bridge Hill down here, you're kind of familiar with that hill, aren't you, down in that neck of the woods, guys? Come, it's still there today, right? Still there today. We, it was there this morning anyway, right? <laughs> Dad had an old truck, his an old green Ford, and he, he'd put her down this way, he said, son, he'd stop at the bottom, and he said he'd put it in bull low. Everybody say bull low. <laughs> For some of you who don't know what bull low is, it's catching a really low gear. And it ain't going to be fast, but I'm going over. How many of y'all know that? If that's the way you got to get there, get there. Look over to them and tell them, catch another gear. Amen. Amen. Catch another gear. And so we had climbed Twin Bridge Hill in this old Ford pickup of ours more than once. But I had never, taught, I, I had never tackled a hill like that when going up to Cameron Pass. It wasn't beautiful coming up uh, the Twin Bridge Hill. But when you put, now here, here's a look. So we've got this 1977 four-wheel drive Ford, single cab, nine people in it. Let me tell you how that happened. <laughs> now wait, not, not, now don't just go there. We were a close family, but not that close. We had Pastor Danny's cab over camper on. Yeah. We packed a bunch in there. How many of y'all know you go to jail for that today? And rightfully so. I don't have a problem with that. We had his cab over camper on a half ton short bed. We're already overloaded. We put our little pop-up camper hooked on the back behind it. We've got three to four riding in the cab like this, and I'm driving like that. You ever shift gears in a four-speed? <laughs> And we hit into Cameron Pass, and we're climbing, and that hill went on and on, and it come around another curve, and we can't see the top yet, and I went around another curve, and I still can't see the top. Lord, when will this hill? Anybody ever been in a spot like that in life? <laughs> Just in your life. Hmm. Hard place. Long pool. Steep grade. <laughs> that old truck, I started losing gears. <laughs> went to third. And then I went to second. You're exactly right, but I still had bull low, baby, and I didn't have to go there, but it was there if I needed it. 
that old truck in second gear. We didn't have enough money for us all to go separately, so we pulled our money. Barely made it back. <laughs> Bought gas out there, and what a time. Good memories. But I learned something about the power that you need. And so the next time I tackled that hill, I was in a Chevy. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and all the GM fans, right? Now listen, I'm just having some fun this morning. It had an extended cab, not a big cab, but the kids were little, right? A Chevy, and, and, and it had one of those fuel-injected Vortec engines in it. Uh, uh, right? And we went on up. Last time I went up, it was with a Dodge and a Cummins engine in it, and I liked it. It was blowing black smoke. Going right on up, just eat it up, right on up. More power! More power. Now, that old Ford was blowing black smoke, too, but it wasn't a diesel. They ain't supposed to do that. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you do. Woo. If you look behind you, because we're going to go to the Great Commission here, and he says, these signs shall follow them that believe. If you look behind you and there ain't nothing but a trail of black smoke and you ain't running a diesel, there's a problem. <laughs> All right. Now, I get past the story. Everybody understand? Now listen, gang, there's some, there's some things in life that's long and hard. And I think we're in one of those pools in our world today. We need more of God. And the only way our world gets more of God is more of God in you and in me. Anybody say amen? And that's where we're going, gang. That's where we're going. Let's encourage one another in that. Now let's talk about, let's talk about this power thing just a little bit more. Go with me to Luke chapter 10, verse 19. There's two words that are translated power, and I love it because they're both in this, just in this one passage right here, in this one verse. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus' words, right? Red letter. Behold, I give you power. Everybody say power. power. This is the Greek word exousia, which literally means authority. I have given you, I have authorized you. This come from Jesus, the Son of God. This come from the head of the body of Christ. I have given you authority. I've given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. I think that that's a spiritual connotation. How about you? And over all the power, everybody say dunamis. The Greek word dunamis. And it literally means the inherent power that's residing in something. In this case, it's residing in the enemy. I have given you authority over all the inherent power over the enemy. He don't have the authority. You have. And then one, Acts 1 and 8 says, you shall receive power. Everybody say dunamis. Yeah. You have exousia and dunamis over all the dunamis of the enemy. The inherent power in your God is greater than the inherent power in our enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! That's good stuff. You will receive power. Everybody say, I receive that. that. What does that mean? That means I'm yielding to that. See, I know you believe it. I'm in a church of believers. But we've got to be a church of yielders. And we yield to the right thing, yielding to the Spirit of God. Listen, it ain't just about a bunch of hoops and hallelujahs and all that. Right? This is about the real deal because somebody's going to... Right? There's people that's dying on this list and they need prayer. And it's appointed unto man once to die. And I don't struggle with that, but I don't want you to go earlier than your appointment. Premature. Hmm? Missy, I think about your daddy. I was praying last night just putting this together. What an awesome testimony. Every time I see your daddy, it reminds me of a day in Cox Hospital, in, the, in that basement area up there, right? Remember that day in the waiting room? And we don't give up and we don't quit because we fight, don't we, sis? We believe in prayer and we believe in the God who heals and he still heals. And we believe, and if I could do it, I'd do it, but it's in his power working in us, right? And so, 2 Timothy 1.7, 2 Timothy 1.7 says, it is familiar, nothing new, but we just rehearse it in our ears. See, we receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon us so we can be what? Witnesses. 
It's not to build us up, but it's to tell, hey, listen, look at what God done. Look, look at what God's done here. It's not to build up a minister or a ministry or a church. It's to glorify God. It's to glorify His Son, Jesus, who granted us access to this beautiful power, these wonderful gifts. God's not given us a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. Now listen to me. Anything that's not from God, you reject it. Amen. If it's not, listen, Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Right, John 10, 10? But I'm come that you might have life. Listen, death is an enemy. The first death were appointed unto man once to die. That come as a result of the curse and the sin of Adam and Eve in the garden. The curse come upon man, right? But how many of y'all know Jesus wore a crown of thorns which is representative of the curse? Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree and he lifted that curse off us and you are under a new covenant in the name of Jesus and that's who we are. That's who we are. And so we embrace that at whatever level and we can grow, right? When I saw that leg grow out, it changed me forever. It just changed me forever. And I've seen since that, I've seen others. Tons and tons of them. Too much to not believe. I love that song that's been out for a year or so, right? Too many to not believe on all of this right here. And so in that, I've not been given the spirit of fear. When we're faced with these kinds of obstacles, terminal, terminal, what a word. No hope. It's impossible with man. And we understand that. It's not to diminish anyone. I thank God for the gifts that our doctors and nurses and all those have. God has given them that knowledge and those gifts, the ability to be able to do that. But they are human beings. And there, there are such limitations to us as human beings. Amen? But with God, all things are possible. And so don't ever write out the, the God equation. God's ne God has never written himself out of your life. He loves you that much. And the love of God. Now listen what we're getting ready to talk about. The balance that God has. God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Put your hand up on your head and pray for yourself right now. God, help me with this one right here, huh? Help me think like you think. Let me see like you see, right? Here's what happens. I, I, listen, having been around the church thing a long, long time, Pentecostal, Baptist, Catholic, still don't read Latin, I'll just be honest with you. But anyway, <laughs> I've seen in some of the old line Pentecostal this, some really hard line, some powerful stuff, but just hard line. Really hard line. And not just even in, in Pentecostal, but in uh, multiple denominations. I shouldn't just single that out. And, and, and don't misunderstand, this is not anti-denomination of any kind just understand that anything that's all power will be overbearing and harsh it will have a tendency it's all power 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 and if you're not walking in the power you ain't you ain't and if you have to pray if you have to go to the doctor you don't take that medicine if you had faith you wouldn't have to take it you be careful what you let come out of your mouth Jesus never condemned the, the lady that had such great faith when she touched the hem of a garment. said she'd been to doctor after doctor after doctor and spent all that she had. He didn't say, well, listen, what took you so long to get here? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Didn't you know that the Savior's in town? What are you doing going with all these doctors? He didn't say that. He didn't condemn. He didn't come to condemn. You be careful. Because the power has got to be balanced with the love. Now what happens if it's all love? All power becomes harsh and overbearing or has a tendency to. If it's all love, it can become feeble. It can become anorexic. It can become weak if it's all love. But if we, how many of y'all know if we've got a really good balance and that comes through having a sound mind? How many of y'all know Jesus was meek and he was just humble and he was so loving until he wasn't and he flipped the switch and said, let me tell you about some power now. Today, the money changers, you leave because you've made the house of God, my father's house, into a den of thieves, and enough is enough. Huh? Same Jesus? Power. He knew the power he had. He knew the love he had. 
Mm. God help us learn to walk in this verse right here. We can quote it. We believe it. But have we yielded to it? Have we yielded to it? That authority. I want to take you back to that word authority, the exousia. I've given you authority over all the dunamis power. I've given you authority power over all the dunamis power of the enemy. You remember the story of the centurion that came to Jesus and he said to Jesus, My servant is lying sick of the palsy. This is what it says in the King James. And he's about to die. And Jesus responds to him. This is Matthew chapter 8, starting at verse 5. And you can go and read it uh, for yourself. We're not going to go there. I'm just going to tell you the story because I want to make a point with it right here. Jesus said, I'll come and I will heal him. And this is, listen, this is a Roman centurion. This is a Roman infidel warrior. But somehow or another, he'd got a hold of truth. How many of y'all know God's not so concerned about your pedigree? Amen. God's not too concerned about Roman, Jew, or whatever, right? He's concerned about what you believe, what you do with what you believe. Centurion said, I'm not worthy that you should come into my house. That was not a false humility. It's a real humility. He said, but I'm a man under authority. And that's the word it uses in that right there in, in Matthew chapter 8. Start reading it, verse 5. I'm a man under authority. It's the same word, exousia. I'm a man under authoritative power been authorized and when my leader says for me to come I come or when I say to one of my men who is under my authority come he comes or go when he goes and then listen to this and he he said Jesus you don't need to come to my house just speak the word everybody say speak the word the words that Jesus speaks John 6 63 says the words that I speak their spirit and their life their spirit and their life. Spirit can go anywhere. It's everywhere at the same time. And it brings life. Anything that is contrary to life is not from God. It's death. If it's contrary to light, it's dark. It's not from God. If it's contrary to truth, it's a lie. It's not from God. And the list goes, right? If it's contrary to love, it's hate. It's not from God. Be careful what you agree with on this earth. Hmm? Be careful what you align your heart with on this earth. The power of God is placed on demand by the love of God. Faith, right? This is what your Bible says, right? Galatians 5, 6, faith works by love. Faith works by love. If I'm going to yield to more power, then I will also at the same time to keep a proper balance. Now listen to me have to yield to more love. Yeah. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the spirit that we... Be. And God give me the soundness of mind. The wholeness of mind to be able to do that. Now, we believe in the miracles. Let's... Uh, let me run on through here. We've already covered that one, covered that one. John 14.10. John 14.10. We're going to get in some takeaway right here and we're done. Uh, Aaron, wherever you're at, son, if you want to come. So John 14 and 10, Jesus begins to give us uh, a little deeper understanding. He is our example. John 14 and 10, he said, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me. Everybody say, He does the work. He does the work. Mm. I don't have that power. I have that power in me. Huh? I, I need to remember. See, true humility, listen, true humility does not deny the power you have. It recognizes that you are the vessel and not the source of that power. You get that? True humility does not deny the power you have. It recognizes that you're a vessel that it flows through, but it's the Father that does the work. He's the source. So what I have to do is whatever my Lazarus situation is, I need to make sure that I show up at the front door and I'm following God. See, Martha heard that Jesus was coming. And if you read it in the King James, she busts out and she is in a hurry. I'm going to go and see Jesus. I want to get there. I, I'm excited. But her brother Lazarus has been dead for four days. She goes 15 furlongs. A furlong is an eighth of a mile. She's just under two miles that she travels to go and see Jesus, to run to meet him. 
And when she sees him, she says, Jesus, right? Jesus, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But I know even now, whatever you ask of the Father, he'll give it to you. And Jesus said, your brother will live again. She responds. How many of y'all, we always got an answer, right? We're always answering the Lord. And she said, yeah, I know. He'll live again in the resurrection. Woo. Now, let, wait for it. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection. And he that believes on me will never die. Do you? Now, listen. This is important. Do you believe this? <laughs> I do, too. See, what you believe matters. And then Jesus goes on in. And we go through the same scenario with Mary. And they're bawling and they're crying and they're grieving. How many of y'all know that when we believe in him, we don't ever die? Right? This physical man, it has an appointment. But there are two deaths. The first death, see, death literally means separation. And I believe that there's only two ways to die. Now, there's a lot of things that can create that, but I believe that there's only two. I believe that something can attack this body. This body can be in a wreck. It can be in a disease or a sickness of some kind. It can kill the body, and it forces the spirit to leave. Oh, yeah. hmm? So that's a big category. But there's another category by which God can say, Well done, good and faithful. Time to come home. And he calls the spirit back. The Spirit returns to God who gave it, right? Now, right. What your, that's what your Bible teaches. And He says, uh, Hey, D.L., it's come home day. Come on home. And when the Spirit leaves, the body's just going to lay down over in the corner. And you guys can all get together and cry, and I'm going to laugh and be partying. You guys can eat potato salad, and I'll be at the buffet in heaven. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my God, right? You guys eat tater salad and throw dirt in my face and tell stories. It'll all be okay. Isn't it a very vastly different picture of what goes on? Hmm. The power of God to hold us and to keep us. He's the one that does the work. Drop down to verse 12. Verily I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do. Now you said you believed earlier. Do you still believe? The works that I do shall do also, and even greater. How do we get there, God? Believe, right? Those that believe. But it's not enough to believe, right? Got to yield. It's not enough to yield. We got to grow up. We have to mature. We gotta, we, we've got to never lose our hunger. And that's what this message is about. We can't lose our hunger. In the story of, uh, this is Acts chapter 3. Um, we can go I'm going to close with uh, Mark 16, 15 Kathy in the story Acts chapter 3 when Peter and John go to the temple and they're, they're about ready to pray right Mark 16 right Mark 16, 15 is where we'll start at it's the great commission it's the very last few, few verses of, of the book of Mark There was a time when Jesus was here. He modeled it. He taught it. But then he went back to the Father. Verse 15. He said unto you, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Anybody got any problem with that? No. He that believes on me is baptized shall, what? Be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. Right? We believe in a heaven and a hell. That's not popular today, but it's still true and it hasn't changed. Right? Still there. And these signs. Everybody say these signs. Jesus very specific. I'm getting ready to go away. It's important that I go away because if I don't, the Holy Spirit can't come. But when I go away, I'll pray the Father and He'll send you another comforter. Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. Right? And when He comes, you'll receive power when He comes upon you. He'll live in you and He'll be with you. Right? All of those manifestations of the Holy Spirit and these signs. What do signs do? Signs give us direction and give us information. They give us direction and they give us information. Signs are for information. You go out here on the highway and you'll get direction and information. Yeah? I always like it when it says Taco Bell right there. 
Didn't know there was one there. Now I do. All right. Just making the point. Okay. Information, man. These signs shall follow them that believe. Who are the signs for? For those that don't know exactly where they're at. For those that don't know exactly where they're going. For those that maybe need to be encouraged. These signs will follow them that believe. So when you're looking behind, what's been following you? There was a lot of years I lived on the wrong side of this thing and I left some ugly signs. All of them said, this is not the way to live. This is not the way to go. Thank God we can turn around. In my name, they'll cast out devils. Look over at your neighbor and tell them that's not your mother-in-law, right? Okay. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Let's... That's not in the Greek, but I think we, I don't know, we see. I mean, they shall speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. And I believe in that right after I've shot them with a 12-gauge shotgun. <laughs> don't bother me at all. It's good medicine for them. They'll take up serpents. I think it's talking about spiritual warfare. Okay. Unless you're on the Isle of Melita and you build a fire and a snake comes out of the sticks. You ever read that about the Apostle Paul? And he beat him and he shook it off in the fire and just kept on preaching and the whole island got saved. Woo! Revival. Fried snake and revival. What a good day. They'll take up serpents if they drink any deadly thing. I think that could be applied to maybe like newlyweds whose wives haven't been to cooking class yet. Or, <laughs> stay with me. It won't hurt them. How many of y'all believe this? They lay hands on the sick and they recover. Did it say it's only for the preacher? No, it didn't. For who? Those who believe. Those who believe. That's you. That's you. Don't be afraid. Challenge yourself. Stretch yourself. Get out of your comfort zone. God, you said this. I believe it. I don't understand it. But there's a lot of things I believe I don't understand. I don't know a thing about jet propulsion, but I've got on a few airplanes and went from here to there. Hmm? So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, right, he was received up in the heavens, sat at the right hand of God. Look at this. And they went forth. It's just about time for us to go forth. They went forth. Preach everywhere. Just proclaim. Witnessing, right? You should be witnesses. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you what God done at church today. Let me tell you about my neighbor that got here. Let me tell you what let me tell you what I've been hearing about Asbury College. God, there's something going on down there in Kentucky. All right? I don't think it's Jack Daniels. Huh? Got another spirit. All right? They went forth, preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming. What? The word with information and direction following. Signs. In the story of Peter and John going into the temple. It's a time of prayer. This is Acts chapter 3. Acts 1, you'll receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, power of spirit comes. Acts 3, they started doing it. Right? Read it. It's the acts or the actions of the apostles. The actions of the believers. They started taking action. And the first action that they took, they're going to pray. And there's a lame man from his mother's womb. He's never, ever walked. He's been lame his entire life. Acts chapter 3. He's laid at the gate called beautiful. You can be in a beautiful place and still be in a miserable situation. Anybody say amen? amen. That going right. Peter come walking by and he looks up and he's begging. He's asking for alms. And Peter looks down and listen, he says, and he fixed his eyes on him. There's a connection. The eye is the window to the soul. And I think that whenever Peter fixed his... See, the Bible is really intentional about the words that's in it. And when it says he fixed his eyes on, I think that that man, 
See, because something had happened a couple of months earlier. Jesus had been at that temple and he cleaned it out. Remember that? We talked about that. He kicked over those, that, that power thing, right? He kicked over those tables of the money changers, cleaned the temple, said, you've made my father's house a den of thieves. I'm making it a house of prayer. And it says, and they brought unto him the lame and the sick and they were healed. But somehow or another, if this guy was laid there every day, he got missed. I don't know how. But somehow he got missed. Maybe he didn't get missed. Maybe he didn't want to go. Maybe he didn't believe. I, I don't know. But I know this day was different because Peter locked eyes. And I think that he saw something in the soul. The windows to the soul are the eyes. I can't prove this, but I think it's interesting that it says, and Peter fixing his eyes on him. And he locked eyes. And I think that lame man saw something in that soul. And I think it triggered something in him. And Peter said, I don't have silver and gold. But what I have. How many of y'all know you can give what you have? He said, well, I'm not this and I'm not that. I, you can give what you have. I don't have silver and gold. I can't give you that. But what I have in the name of Jesus, the name that's above all other names, there ain't no other name like that name. You rise up and walk. And a guy that's never took a step, he rises up and the scripture says he was leaping didn't have to go through therapy. Right? Now, listen, I'm not being ugly. I'm just telling you there was a divine knockout. God absolutely punched the devil's lights out right there. I don't know how the guy keeps getting up. He punched him out with Lazarus. He punched him out with time and time again. Oh, Pharaoh, hey, we got him hemmed up against the Red Sea. Oh, no, you don't. I'm going to do something here. You just hang on. I put a little pillar of fire right there. Separate. You guys going across. Now you guys come on. Come on. I got something planned for you too. Woo! The enemy can't walk where you walk. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Let's rise up and let's go. Rise up with me. Father God, we love you. We believe in miracles. We believe in healing. We believe in the power of faith. We believe in the power of your name. And so we yield. Everybody say we need more power. We believe that. Let's invite God to come. Let's, God, help us to yield. Help us to yield, Lord God, to more love and more power because it's got to be a balanced thing. The spirit of power and the spirit of love through a spirit of a sound mind. Lord God, help me. Help us, God, as a church. You put us here in this little community to be a bright place, to be a place of hope, a place, Lord God, where people can be prayed for. Mark and Michelle, I want you to come up and stand in for baby Abigail. This little girl is a miracle in our midst. What was she, 22, 23 weeks when she was born? 23 weeks. Woo. Not supposed to survive unless you have a church that believes in miracles and a God who is a miracle worker. And grandpas and grandmas, right? Listen, she's fighting again. Just because you whipped the devil yesterday don't mean he won't show up again. Here's a whole prayer list right here. We're going to pray over this. We're going to pray over baby Abigail. Anybody out there? Now listen, here's what I want you to do because these signs follow them that believe. Huh? If you need a healing, you need a miracle, you wave your hand up and wave it, Pastor. Say, I need it. That's me. I need a healing. I need a touch. Amen. All right. And keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. Come on. Keep your hand up. If you are close to one of these people that have their hand up, you put your hands on them and they'll recover. We believe that. We're going to just exercise that. We're going to step out. Hold your hand up. You guys go to them. Some of you come up here and pray with me for Abigail and uh, some of the rest of you. Listen. We're going to pray over this list as we close. Amen. Father God, we lift baby Abigail up to you. We thank you, Lord God, for the miracle of her birth, the miracle of her survival. We have seen you heal her and bring her home out of the hospital. Such a tiny, tiny, premature baby girl. Lord God, you're not done with her yet. We thank you, Father. We pray in Jesus' name and we believe in miracles. We believe in healing touch her body drive this sickness these viruses from her body in jesus name such as we have we have that name we have that authority 
we have that dunamis power living in us. We release that in Jesus' name. And we speak the word like the centurion said. We're not there in the hospital with them, but we speak the word over Abigail. We speak life over you, honey. We speak life over you. We speak health over you, Abigail. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we, we pray for those that are on this list. Every name, God, you know. Everyone that's out here in the congregation who held their hand up and everyone that's sitting at home or at work that's watching this or will watch this, we rise up in Jesus' name. And we're going to walk where we've never walked. We're going to praise like we've never praised. We give you all the glory and we give you all of the praise for hearing us and answering prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We trust you. You're the one that does the work. We're just standing at these Lazarus places. Sickness, disease, sorrow, grief. All those places, Lord God. The hard climbs. Lord God, we recognize that in the world we're living in, we need more power. We need to catch another gear. And when we catch that gear, Lord God, there'll be more power there. It'll get us to the top and it'll get us on over. Thank you, Lord God, for what's on the other side. We're not going to quit on this side. We're coming on and one day we'll be home with you. But until then, we're going to keep climbing. We're going to keep growing and maturing. We yield. More of you and less of us is what John the Baptist said. We love you, Lord. We thank you. Dismiss us now in your love. In Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed said, Amen. Amen. Look over your neighbor tell them there's revival in the church. Amen. Amen. You better catch another gear. Come on, catch another gear.